The World Health Organization is calling coronavirus an infodemic because there is so much misinformation and myths out there, and hopefully today we clear those up. Hi, my name is Natasha Bouyan. I'm a primary care physician at One Medical, and today I'll be answering the most commonly Googled questions about coronavirus. Is coronavirus airborne? No, it's not airborne the way the medical community defines airborne. Airborne transmission of a virus means that viral particles can linger in the air for hours after it's been exposed. And luckily, coronavirus is not transmitted that way. We know that coronavirus is spread from person to person transmission. Is coronavirus worse than the flu? Yes, we know that the coronavirus for now appears to be more deadly than the flu. The death rate from the flu is far less than 1%. It's usually closer to 0.1%, in fact. What we're finding is the death rate from coronavirus is perhaps around 3.4%. However, that number might not be totally accurate. There's other studies that's showing it might even be 2%. The reason we don't know much right now is because there might be a lot more people infected than we are testing. So the numbers right now for the death rate aren't entirely accurate, but we do think that it's more deadlier than the flu. When you break down coronavirus infections by age group, that's also when we see a big difference. We're finding that people who are older than 60 years old, they're more likely to die from the COVID-19 disease. Whereas people who are under age 40, the death rate from coronavirus appears to be about 0.4%. So less than half of 1%. Is the coronavirus a pandemic? For now, the World Health Organization is not calling the coronavirus a pandemic. A pandemic basically is worldwide spread of a disease. And right now, coronavirus is contained to a couple of countries. Does coronavirus go away? About four out of five people who get the COVID-19 disease will actually end up getting totally better. And for a lot of them, they have very mild symptoms. They might not even know that they have the COVID-19 disease. So yes, for many people, coronavirus can go away. Can coronavirus be cured? Right now, we don't have any treatments to cure coronavirus if you end up getting the COVID-19 disease. We do have a lot of things that can control your symptoms, however. So if you have nasal congestion, you can try a nasal steroid. It will decrease inflammation in your respiratory passageway. If you have a cough, you can always try a decongestant. And if you have fevers, you can try a fever buster like an anti-inflammatory such as ibuprofen or even Tylenol. Can coronavirus live on objects? The coronavirus is much more common to live on hard surfaces. The way it ends up there is if someone coughs or sneezes and droplets get on the hard surface, the virus can be living on the hard surface anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days. It's less common for the coronavirus to live on soft surfaces like clothing or carpets, but we've seen that before too. That's why it's very important. If you cough or sneeze, you do it into a Kleenex or you do it into the fold of your elbow. Why is coronavirus worse than the flu? The really big factor about coronavirus is it's new and we don't know a lot about it. Because no humans have had coronavirus in the past, we have no immunity to coronavirus. Whereas at least with the flu, we've got immunity built up from past flu seasons and there's a vaccine for the flu, so we've got immunity built up from the vaccine. This is in contrast to the coronavirus, which we don't have any immunity and we don't have a vaccine for, although that's in the works. How is coronavirus spread? Coronavirus is spread from person to person transmission through droplets. What we mean by that is if you're standing less than six feet away from somebody and they cough or sneeze, droplets can end up on you. You can inhale those droplets. They can go in through your nose or your mouth. Another way it's transmitted is through hard surfaces. So if somebody coughs or sneezes on a hard surface and the virus is living there, someone else could touch that virus and then later touch their face, their mouth, their nose, and they can get the disease that way as well. There are ways that you can protect yourself against coronavirus. Number one is washing your hands frequently. Washing your hands takes 20 seconds each. Make sure you get underneath those fingernails and get the back of your hands as well. If you're not able to wash your hands, make sure that you're using an alcohol-based sanitizer. An alcohol-based sanitizer should be at least 60% alcohol. Another thing that you can do is avoid touching your face. Another important thing to do to prevent getting coronavirus is wipe down hard surfaces. Be sure to wipe down things like doorknobs, tables, etc., especially if you're around people who are at risk. What does coronavirus do? In essence, the coronavirus attaches to cells in our bodies and it increases our mucus production. It's often impacting our lower respiratory tract and it can cause things like coughing and sneezing. It can cause us to get fevers. Some people with coronavirus also end up getting GI issues. They might get vomiting or feel nauseated. 
People with really severe symptoms can also get severe shortness of breath. What are coronavirus symptoms? Coronavirus symptoms are very similar to the flu, and in 80% of cases, it's nearly indistinguishable from the flu. Symptoms can actually range from having nothing at all, to having fever and a cough, to having severe shortness of breath. Has coronavirus peaked? We don't quite know this yet, but we don't think that it's actually peaked in the US yet. Because we don't have a lot of research on coronavirus, we don't have good data modeling to tell us how coronavirus is going to behave. So we actually don't think it's peaked quite yet. When will coronavirus end? We don't actually know the answer to that. Public health officials think that there are three potential outcomes that could happen here. Number one, the coronavirus could actually be contained through our public health interventions and potentially disappear. That's very similar to what happened to SARS in the past. Number two, we could develop a vaccine against coronavirus and that could curb a lot of the spread of disease of COVID-19. Number three, coronavirus could continue to spread further and further and end up being a circulating virus that's just in our environment. I hope that this has answered a lot of your questions about coronavirus, also known as the COVID-19 disease. There are a lot of ways to protect yourself, so I don't want people to worry quite yet. Number one, make sure that you are frequently washing your hands. Washing your hands effectively means washing for 20 seconds with soap and water, get underneath your fingernails, get the back of your hands. If you're not able to wash your hands frequently, make sure you carry around hand sanitizer with you. The hand sanitizer you have should be 60% alcohol based. If you have any sort of symptoms that are respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, please, please, please stay at home. Avoid going to work, avoid going to public places, and avoid going to crowded places. If you have any sort of respiratory symptoms, fever, coughing, shortness of breath, sneezing, rather than going immediately to see your primary care provider, it's important to reach out to them virtually. That might be a phone call to your primary care provider's office, a message that you send them, or even a video visit. The reason why is oftentimes there's not a lot that we do to treat a flu or even the coronavirus, and it's more important that you stay safe at home and recover. Another thing that we've noticed is a lot of people have anxiety and fear about this coronavirus. It's really important that all of us are taking care of our mental health during this time. There's a couple simple steps that we can all do to be vigilant about our mental health. Number one, make sure that you are sleeping. A lot of us are not sleeping or getting adequate amounts of sleep. Number two, be sure that you're exercising. Number three, make sure that you are eating healthy, a diet rich with fruits and vegetables and natural fresh foods. And finally, be sure to unplug from social media and unplug from that 24 hour news cycle. If you are feeling a lot of anxiety during this time, please reach out to your primary care provider. They're able to help you through this too.